Here's some info on radiation detection by a Geiger Miller tube, or more like pancake probe than a tube. But anyway, so what we've got here are identical source disks with different radioisotopes. First of all, we've got 0.1 microcurie of the beta emitter strontium 90, and 0.1 microcurie uh, equals to 3,700 bicarel. And that means there's uh, 3,000 atoms decaying every second. So I'm guessing from one side, like this, we could get probably about 1,500 1, counts per second. Then we've got cesium-137 with an activity of 0.25 microcurie. And that equals to 9,250 bicarel. So maybe about 4,000 counts, I suppose. And then we've got barium 100. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Season 137 is a beta and gamma emitter. And then we've got barium 133, one microcurie, and one microcurie equals to 37,000 picarel, so about 15,000 from front spot, I suppose. Taking it in half because of the other side, and a little less because of the rays going out the sides as well, so it's just a rough estimate, but still. So, what do you think will be hottest? We've got one microcurie, 0.25 microcurie, and just 0.1 microcurie. So in theory, that should be the hottest, right? Because there's the most radiation emitted by it. Let's see. Here's the good CDV 700 on a maximum times 100 setting. And we're using the barium source with a bit of a space holder. It fits right perfectly in here. Oh. And put that up front. As you can see we might be getting 3,000 counts per minute. Not all that much. Okay, so that's for the one microcurie of gamma radiation. Now we have 0.25 microcurie of uh, beta and gamma, so that's a quarter of the activity of that. And let's see what the reading will be. The reading, as you can see, is actually much higher. It is just about 6,000, yeah, just about 6,000 counts per minute. And now we're going to try strontium-90 with an activity of 0.1 microcurie. So that's a tenth of the uh, barium-133. Well, let's see what happens if we place that in front. You can see it produces by far the highest reading. About 27,000 counts per minute. So that's kind of weird, isn't it? That's why it is important to note what kind of radiation a source emits. Because um, as for gamma radiation, with a kind of normal range of a few hundred kilo electron volts to about one or just over one mega electron volt, no detection is just about, yeah, a couple percent, sometimes one or two percent of all the gamma radiation gets detected. So that's it, yeah, just one to two percent in a typical Geiger Miller tube. That's all. And you can probably guess why we're getting much more from the cesium-137. That is because of the beta radiation. The gamma radiation is just as crap as from that. <laughs> doesn't really get detected very well, but the beta radiation does, and that's also the reason for the strontium-90 with the lowest activity actually being the hottest source, at least, towards the Geiger-Muller counter. So from gamma radiation, we only get about 1%, maybe 2% of what's actually really being emitted by that source, while with the strontium-90, with that uh, beta radiation, we're getting almost 100% from it. 
Not quite, because I, I didn't uncover that, and some of the beta particles will still get stuck in the paper and stuff. But if you hold it right up to a Mika windowed um, Geiger Miller tube, you should get nearing 100% of the beta radiation. Probably we just got about 90% or something. Of course, the precise numbers matter on a lot of factors, like how your tube is manufactured. As I said, if it has a Mika window, it detects uh, much more soft rays, like alpha radiation or beta radiation with a very low energy. And also what matters is the voltage you're running the tube at, because at a low voltage you won't even get a reading from anything. And it also matters with uh, what gas those tubes are filled. It's usually uh, noble gas and uh, halogen, but it also depends what gas it is and uh, what pressure it is inside the tube and stuff like that. So um, the sensitivity of your tube always depends, and you can usually see that in the manual. There should be some ranges, not a calibrated range for the tube. So as you can see with our estimated number, a bit less than the half, for Half of the rays will be going out that side and not towards uh, the Geiger Miller tube or the pancake probe in this case. And you can see um, we expected 15,000 counts from the one microcarry source of bearing 133. We actually got 50 counts, that is uh, per second of course, so I divided uh, the number we got by 60. So that is just 0.3% of what we expected. Of course, we had a bit of a distance, but even if you, let's say you, you double that or whatever, you, you just get an, a rough percent, maybe, of gamma radiation that was actually detected, even if you hold that right close up. And from the 0.25 microcurry season 137 source, that is beta and gamma, we got uh, 116 counts per second uh, out of 4,000 that were expected. So we had at least a 3% detection rate, so that's better than the typical gamma emitter. But <coughs> with the uh, strontium-90 source of 0.1 microcurry, we expected up to 1,500 counts per second. We've got 450 counts per second, so we detected 30% of that. And also, if I move the source right up close to there, You can see it matches out the scale. That's why I actually use this place order, but if you take that in consideration, we just got over 50,000 counts per minute. Not exactly sure how much, maybe 80,000 counts per minute or whatever. You would get quite close to those 100% we just actually es estimated for that. So I hope you enjoyed this little video about sensitivity of typical Geiger Müller counters. I hope I will be able to bring you a comparison video uh, to proportional tubes or even other types of detectors such as scintillation counters at some point. But for now, yeah, keep this in mind when re measuring different sources and always check the manual of your Geiger Miller tube to actually know how sensitive it is to the different types of radiation. For example, the cathode material also plays a large role in how sensitive it is to uh, gamma radiation. There's a lot to consider, but this should conclude the video for now. Thanks for watching.